So all the animations you see here were created with one single text layer. This happens to be my favorite technique. I use it all the time, and it's essentially using icon fonts in combination with text animators in Adobe After Effects. And today I'm gonna to be breaking down all these animations step by step so you can learn how to do the same thing. But the first thing we need to do is actually download and install some icon fonts. For this specific tutorial, I'm gonna be using two in particular. First is Wingdings. If you wanna head over to Adobe Fonts, you can find these on that website. Just simply log in with your Adobe ID, search Wingdings, and you can install all of those, and they will automatically show up in your Adobe suite of applications. The second font I'm using here is a really, really cool font called NATO Kit. I'll link this website down in the video description. So just head over here, download it and install it and you'll be ready to rock and roll. Okay, so let's break down this first infographic animation. So here I've got these soldiers that animate on. So oftentimes I need to visualize the quantity of something. Um, and in this case, I'm looking at the quantity of soldiers in an area. And let's say in this specific example, every single icon of a soldier represents 10 soldiers. So here we're gonna see 150 soldiers because we have 15 icons. So let's recreate this. So first thing I want to do is open up my font book because I actually want to see I have this NATO kit font. But if I just create a new text layer here and I just start to type something out, well, first, if I click and select NATO kit, I still really can't tell like what's going to be what I can just start to type out and I get, you know, some different icons here, but I want to see specifically what I'm looking for. So to do this, I'm going to head over to my font book application because I'm on a Mac and I'm just going to do a search for NATO kit and here it is right here I'll double click on this to open it up and if I scroll down it shows me all of the individual ones and I want this soldier right here so I'm going to double click on this and it shows me all the specifics right here here is the key but I can also click on copy and then if I come back to After Effects I can simply double click in my text and then paste that and now voila I've got my little soldier I'm going to bring him up here, bring up the size. So now I have this little text layer that is showing me the icon of this particular soldier. So what I want to do now is create 15 of these. So I'm going to copy and then just paste it, you know, 15 times five. So there's five. Let's copy it again and then bang, bang. Okay. Now I've got 15. So what I want to do is I want to have these in like a perfect square kind of grid uh, so that I can, you know, make everything look nice and neat. There might be a case where you just want it like this, but you know, I want a nice little square grid where I have three columns of five. So for this, I'm going to scroll down in the properties panel and I'm going to switch from point text. I'm going to switch it to box text. And now if you double click, you have this box and now you can start to move this around and it will reveal I need to adjust uh, the letting here so I can see these. And now we're starting to see the different columns here. It's really cool because look at how I can make these adjustments. As I move the font size, it's automatically adjusting these. I can change the letting here. And now we can kind of squish this in until we have, bang, there we go. And now I can start to you know, adjust my letting here and if i click off and then click back on i can quickly go and grab the align tool and just align this to the middle here and now i can even click on this right click go to transform and then just center the anchor point in the layer content so this is a really really cool way to work so now i've got this cool little infographic i want to bring it to life so how do we bring it to life well i'm going to grab this text layer go back to the properties panel at the very bottom we have add animator so if i click on this here we can choose whatever kind of property we want. So I want these to scale up from the top all the way down to the bottom. So I will click on scale. That adds a new animator down here. It has a range selector and then our parameter. So if I open up range selector, this has three different parameters. It has start, end, and offset, has all these advanced parameters. But essentially what it's doing is it will animate on. So if I scale this down to zero, what it's gonna do is now as I move the start, it will animate these right now by character. So I just need to animate my range selector and then down here in advanced is where you can really get advanced controls. Like so if I wanna animate in the actual lines, I can switch this to lines and now as I move start, you'll see that these animate 
up by lines, um, and then you can really control anything you want. You just need to know how this works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do them by character. So we'll switch based on characters, and we're gonna do the shape to be ramp up, and this is how these animate on. So this will allow these to overlap as they animate on. And you wanna mess with the ease high, ease low. You know, bring those somewhere just under 30 or something. And now if we move the start here, you can see they're starting to go like that. And what you wanna do is you wanna animate the offset. So bring the offset down to negative 100, add a keyframe, then go out to maybe two seconds and then change that to 100. And now we have an animation here. So now we've got this little animation here. And if you wanna add more punch to it, just simply add your curves to your keyframes here. Maybe I'll punch this value out like that. Change my values here just a little bit. There we go, and just like that, I've created a cool little infographic. It has one layer, insanely customizable. I love this. And now I could really spice it up. I could add a drop shadow, I could change size, customize whatever I want, add a title um, with a legend or a key or whatever I wanna do. I could attach it to my map, yada yada. My favorite part of this is just how neat and simple this timeline is. It's got three layers. We've got the GeoLayers base map with the anchor and then one text layer. So let me just go ahead and rename this infographic. Okay, next up, we're going to do some symbols on our map. We want them on a path so we can quickly move our symbols around. And this is a really, really cool feature here. So I'm going to hide our infographic layer here. Now I'm going to, let's say we wanna visualize in some area, there's been some nuclear disaster and we wanna show like radioactive areas. So I'm going to add a new text layer, click right here, and we're gonna switch over to wingdings. Now with wingdings, I'm gonna grab the first wingdings here. So I printed out this wingdings cheat sheet. You can find these if you Google them. They're pretty useful. I'm gonna like laminate this or put it in a folder or book or something. Um, and I can quickly find here because there's three different versions of wingdings and then you have webdings. But then right here on wingdings, we have this radioactive symbol. At least I think it's a radioactive symbol. And it says right here it is, I don't even know what the name of the symbol is, but if I just, Double click here, and I type this in, boom, there it is. Now I'm gonna click on this, that's way too big. So let's say we wanna go around the edge like all this edge of grease or something. So I'm gonna lower this down. So we wanna have like a bunch of symbols kind of like showing a specific area. So the way that we can do this is by adding a mask path to our text layer. So once again, this is all gonna be one layer. Keep it nice and tidy. So just click your text layer and then click on the pen tool and then just draw out a path of where you want this to, uh, your symbols to be located. So here I've got this new path. Let me zoom in here. Got this new path. So how do I get this symbol on the path? Well, you just open up the text layer, go to text, path options, and then under path, select mask one, and that will automatically snap it to the mask and we've got letting and a bunch of other stuff going on here, so that's why it's looking kind of crazy here. Um, not all of our settings are, you know, I need to reset a lot of these settings. But if you look at our path options now, we have like five different things that we can play with here. But if we just grab this mask and start to move it around, this thing is snapped right to it, which is really, really cool. And as I spin it around, you'll see it's like perpendicular, it's like or parallel to that mask path or sorry, perpendicular. So what I can do now is I can double click it, I can copy and then start to paste it and it's gonna paste along this path. I can grab all of these, I can bring the size of these down, I can mess with the kerning of these, but I can do all that right down here with these. So I can force the alignment so that they'll perfectly fit within the length of my path. I can select, um, I can turn off that perpendicular with path so they're all facing upright, which is indeed what I wanna do here. So now I can just move this around here and have a whole lot of flexibility. This is super duper cool. I could even animate this path if I want. And I can copy, paste, paste. If you wanna add a bunch of symbols, you know, just add them like that and then change the size. And now we've got our cool, like little radioactive area. This is a really, really fun way to add 
symbols to your map very, very quickly. And Wingdings, as you saw before, has arrows, has all these different symbols that are really, really great. I use these all the time when I'm visualizing conflict maps. Uh, you can use X's or triangles to do uh, to show like fortress areas or um, strongholds. The possibilities are endless. And when you start to animate these things, uh, that's where, really where you can get to some cool looks. Oh, here's another really cool symbol. So we have the skull and crossbones, capital N for wingdings. So I could come over here and just switch these. And let's go capital N and then N, 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 N. If I, as I start to type these out, they're auto like fitting here. I cannot explain to you or express to you how much I absolutely love this workflow. Let me show you one more, but first let me rename this symbols on a path okay now let's say for example i want to have some vehicles or aircraft moving across the map these little glyph icons so i'm going to come back to my nato kit here and let's just grab a tank so we have this tank here well this one's looking pretty cool i'm just going to copy this we'll come back to after effects add a new text layer paste and we grab the wrong one um, actually, no, we didn't grab the wrong one. We're in Wingdings. So let's switch over to NATO kit. There we go. Now we've got our tank. Let's crank up the size of this tank. And now I'll rename this layer tank because if it's just saying four, it's not very helpful. So I want to have this tank move from over here in the east to the west. So I'm going to go grab my mask tool again. And, or the pen tool, and with the text layer selected, let's just draw out this path that we want it to take. So let's say we want it to go all the way up and over here. So I'm gonna open up our text layer again, go down to path options and just put that tank on there, mask one, boom, now you've got the tank on there. So it's upside down, we have a bit of a problem here. So what I can do is click reverse path, so it's gonna flip it back to that side. And now, how do I get this tank to move along the path. I mean, I can animate this path if I want, and it's just so darn cool because as I move the Bezier handles here, you know, it's going to stick to that unless, of course, I turn off perpendicular to path, then it's just going to um, always be facing up. But I do indeed want perpendicular to path, so it smoothly moves along with that. But if I want to animate this along the path, what I can do is I can keyframe the first and last margin here so first margin just you know you can move it over here and as i kind of shuttle this around you'll notice that it perfectly follows the path and not only that it's just going to keep going in that specific direction so let's move this over to here so what i can do is i can just add some keyframes here for first margin or last margin whatever you want to do and let's actually bring it off the end here and then over the course of five seconds, we will have it um, animate on screen and then animate out. And now check that out. Over the course of five seconds, we now have a tank coming in, going down, and then scrolling out. And I could do a ton of different stuff here. I could loop this um, out. I could do a loop out cycle to just have this tank constantly come through. Or if we want a whole you know, platoon or brigade of tanks, I can start to paste these on here. Um, Super duper cool. So these can be uh, animated on, or if you just want these to be static on your map, there's so many ways that you can customize this. Again, I figured out this technique a few years ago and was just astonished with what you can do with this, specifically with map animations, because you can just be, you can do label templates and connect everything to your map. And even with this path here, so I can connect this path to like borders or anything else, any other path on my GeoLayers map. If you wanna go and do a deep dive on that, I have another tutorial that I did a few years ago that's about like the front line of a war. So I will link to that in the video description if you wanna go check that out. It uses uh, wingdings triangles that I attach to borders and then animate those to have like a moving front line. Incredibly cool. As always, if you wanna download these project files, head over to my Patreon page. Okay, so there you have it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you wanna learn more about the art of map animation, check out my courses, which are linked down in the video description. I have a GeoLayers 3 masterclass, as well as a Battle Maps masterclass, which is really a lot of fun. So go check those out. And I will see you in the next one.